Uh, well, Sarah is um, kind of a born outsider. She she's from the UK and has lived sort of a really hard life. Um, she was fostered. Uh, she was in various foster homes um, outside of London with her her foster brother Felix, um, who is kind of the closest link she has to a family and the closest connection she has in her life. And she um, she had a child about seven years ago, uh, a daughter named uh, Kira, who she kind of abandoned about a year ago. And she's coming back, trying to make good by her daughter, trying to be back on the right path because she's sort of made a lot of mistakes and she wants to close the door on her past. And uh, yeah, so we see her at a time in her life where she's trying to make a change and, and, and really struggling to let go of all the things, all of her, her kind of animal instincts to run and to get away and to fight and to, you know, she just needs to be still and she needs to be responsible and she needs to take care of her daughter and she's fighting very hard against and for that. Felix is um, Sarah's foster brother. They were fostered together in the UK before they came over to North America. He is her confidant and, and vice versa. They're the person that each other would call in the middle of the night if that ever happened. And, um, which it does. Which it does <laughs> <laughs> on multiple occasions. But I, he, you know, she disappeared for about 10 months and uh, I really had fun exploring the idea of I'm, I'm a younger brother, I have two older sisters, and I would do anything for my, my sisters. If, if they say jump, and I'm like, okay, yeah, and I'm happy to do it. And just like he would do anything for her, but he was really burned when she left and didn't say anything. She just took off, and um, you know, he's, he, when they, they meet that first night again, it, it's like, you know, no time has passed, but there is, there's trepidation on his part, and he's nervous. He's cautious, like anybody is when they've been hurt by someone. So they both have difficulty trusting yeah. people. And uh, they, yeah, they're all, they're already dis mistrust. Like they, they, yeah, they have difficulty trusting already. So to add to that, you know, this is there's sort of been a rift in the family, and it's. And I think I think what people can relate to in both characters is that humanity is mm -hmm. that um, complicated, you know, com complicated, contradictory nature that we as humans are. Yeah, these are not like sci-fi caricatures. These are just, they're just people. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, really important that they're from outside of North America because I think inherently they're kind of, there's a, there's a feeling in them that is outsiders. You know what I mean? That they don't, for Sarah, I know she feels like she doesn't belong into what society is, right? You know what I mean? And she's sort of outside the law and outside the culture and outside everything. So I think that is, a, is an even greater um, challenge for her than to kind of assimilate and be part of, part of the way things work, which she's trying to do. Um, yeah, and I think it's just also like a really beautiful history that there is in, in the UK that we don't have here necessarily, um, because we're quite a young country. So there's a there's a culture and a history there that's really deep. There's a class system that still exists today that mm. doesn't exist here at all. You know, you can kind of tell where somebody's from, neighborhood, like what neighborhood they're from just by their dialect, you know, in the UK. In London alone, there's like 20,000 different dialects just based on, in a neighborhood. So, um, you know, those kinds of distinctions are really important to somebody who, who already feels like they don't belong, you know what I mean? And then when you hear their voice, you know they're this, that, this, that, you know what I mean? And that's, it's something to play with. I think it's not just about having an English accent, it's not just about dressing like a European person, it's about English people argue differently, just like Americans argue differently from Canadians. They receive people differently, they trust differently, they... Um, the fact that Felix was a, a, the younger character, he tends to be a little bit louder as if he's always trying to be heard. These are all things that you can kind of bring in, and be inspired by and bring them into the performance. And culture is a big part of that. Culture is not just you know, dialect or region or, or accent, it's, it's the way that you move through the world, which mm -hmm. taught me a lot about.
Uh, we, I stayed in, we both stayed, stayed in the accent yeah. all, like any time I was Sarah, I was in the accent and he was always in the accent as well. And then for my other characters, I, I did the same. I would stay kind of in the physicality and the mannerisms and the dialect of, of whatever character I was playing at that time because it just helps. It's it was just easier that way because mm. you're, it, you, you, you get into a rhythm and then I find that, and I think we've talked about this, when you know something really well, you find room to explore. That's when you have those sort of little creative breakthroughs where you're like, oh, this is a new mannerism or this is a new, a new physicality that, that, I, that feels really right for this person. And um, that you're not generally, thinking about it. Yeah, it only comes when you're sort of, you're focused on, on the accent and the body language and, and the way that they receive people all the time. It's, it's already happening unconsciously and you find freedom within that. We find freedom within that. Yeah, I'd never done it before like that. I'd always, because I'd done a lot of accent work before, but I was really embarrassed actually to keep talking as the character. Yeah. On set. Like I worked in Morocco as Mother Mary and had to have an RP accent and was terrified because I was working with a bunch of Brits. So I was like, blah, 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 you know, so I reserved it only for on screen. And I think that's a bit precious and a bit, you know, I'm, you, I think it, you know, it stilts the performance a little bit. So I think, yeah, like us doing it all the time was just like the dynamic just remained there. I think trust your gut in every decision you make. I, I know myself, you know, I went to LA like a few years ago and was a completely different person than I am now because I wanted to be what they, what they wanted me to be. You know, I thought I needed to dress a certain way, I needed to look a certain way, talk a certain way. And uh, ultimately, I wasn't myself going into meetings or interviews or auditions or anything. It's so much about finding your voice and, and being confident with that voice because it's unique to you. And it's, it's why you're a fascinating actor to watch because you're bringing your interesting impulses and unique perspective and unique voice and point of view. And that's, that's really important, I think. If don't feel bad if you fall out of love with it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Auditioning is a really hard knock and you know it's I, everybody says oh there's a lot of rejection there's a lot of rejection it's it's not personal rejection and most actors especially if you've been doing stage or you've been auditioning for school plays or you've been studying it and um, taking it on, you're you're familiar with the idea of being told no it's it's that you know it's when you go for like a year and you haven't worked and you're thinking Am I getting rejected by the universe? Is this not the right path for me? I don't even like it anymore. I get, I'm afraid when I get you know, uh, auditions and sides and scripts sent to my email box. I'm, I don't even want to look at it. I went through times like that. You get nervous. You, you become afraid to fail. And you, mm -hmm. you sort of have a little bit of fear of failure. But if you can work through that and recognize that it happens to a lot of people and that there will be moments where you don't like it and when it's hard and it's taxing, then it opens you up to experience all the moments when it's amazing and it's incredible and it's fruitful and it's exactly what you want it to be. And so much of the, we don't have a lot of control over what decisions get made. Yeah. You know, who gets a part based on the bop 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 which you have no control over. You know, it's look or it's height or it's politics, whatever. Like it's, you know, um, so the only thing you can kind of control is the work that you put into everything that you do as well is studying is watching amazing films like you know you, your inspiration with Carrie and everything like that like <laughs> watching films that you're obsessed with yeah studying over actors and over again. also having a life that's not acting too yeah you've it's got crucial. a little life that's a big one yeah. and i think you it's really easy especially in LA to get sucked into the actors but if you want to be an actor you've got to live a life you have to be a person yeah. first <laughs>